when you eat or drink something very acidic, and we could talk about what that means, it actually causes inflammation as you're swallowing. And not only affecting the throat, but the sinuses, the ears, the lungs, and the vocal cords. And this is what trips people up because they'll come in and they'll say, oh my God, I sound like this. And I've been clearing my throat for weeks and my allergies are acting up and I have nasal drip and I need some antihistamines and an allergy investigation when really it's the acidity of what they're eating that's triggering all these symptoms. People say, oh, it's just acid reflux, take some medication, take some Tums, you'll be fine. As it turns out, uncontrolled or insufficiently controlled acid reflux can lead to esophageal cancer. 75 million Americans have gastroesophageal reflux disease. So we're all at risk. The scary thing is a lot of people don't have the traditional symptoms. Only one out of 10 people that come to see me in the office are complaining of heartburn. Most people complain that they have a drip, that they're coughing, that they're hoarse. And we have to ask some questions about what they eat. When's the last time your doctor asked you any questions about what you eat? When I start asking people, do you drink soda or bottled iced tea? They look at me like I have nine heads. Hey, it's important to ask these questions. If you're not being Ask these questions, say, this is what I'm eating and drinking, is this okay? Or bring in even a, say, a 10-day food diary, or if that's too much, a three-day food diary. When you're in the waiting area, you can just write that down. This is what I had for breakfast, this is what I had for dinner last night. This is how many hours I stayed up after my last meal. These are seemingly innocuous questions, but really, you're, you're giving your clinician the keys to a lot of these symptoms.